Hello. Hello. Welcome back. It's good to be back. Number two. Video number two. It is. I think at least one person watched this on YouTube. Really? At least one. Is that many? At least two. Maybe even two. It was me. Was it you? Both times. Yes, that's <laughs> okay. Oh well. No, someone stopped me in a cafe and says uh, that they'd really enjoyed our video. I'm very pleased. So that's good. So at least one person other than you we've, and me watched it. We've made somebody's life happier. Excellent. Which is very good. So I think we need to introduce ourselves. Yes. I'm David Horgan. And I'm Joe Neary. And I'm the team vicar in the Bent City. And I'm nominally the team rector. No, you definitely are the team rector. That's good. Um, and these videos are just us exploring the gospel for the Sunday after. They are. Okay. Yes. Lovely. I thought we might read the gospel because otherwise you don't necessarily know what we're talking about. That's a good idea. You okay. read it. I will do. So this is the gospel for this coming Sunday, Christ the King. It is. So it's the last Sunday in the church's year. It is. So it's end of year. It is. And it's celebrating Christ the King. And this comes from Luke's gospel because we're finishing up year C. We are. Uh, Luke's gospel, chapter 23. Good. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, truly I tell you, Today, you will be with me in paradise. What stands out for you in that passage, Dave? I've always liked the, uh, the line, today you will, you will be with me in paradise. And then trying to work out what that actually means. Mm. And uh, yeah, so I've always, I've always liked that. And what about you? What stands out for you? I was, I'm always very drawn by that power of forgiveness that comes on the cross. Mm -hmm. uh, so Jesus forgives the people who are crucifying him and it also offers that forgiveness to the criminals who've done wrong. Mm -hmm. um, so it's that for me, it's that power of forgiveness even in the most extreme agony and suffering and pain that Jesus is experiencing. And in effect, that is what the last four weeks, this kingdom season, has been all about, isn't it? Um, because we, we're looking at Advent, or coming to Advent, when we're looking towards the birth of the Saviour. But the kingdom season, for me, allows us to look at what that actually means. That as we remember and we look at all the, uh, the incidences that we've been reading about, that the kingdom season takes us past that, past just expecting, but what does the birth of Christ mean, that there is a new kingdom available to us? And it's really interesting, that word kingdom, isn't it? I talk about it quite a lot when I'm saying, I think I talk about the kingdom being the things of God we see now in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a word that has double meanings for some people, mm -hmm. because kingdom to some suggests maleness. The king imagery, yes, of course. It suggests uh, a place that uh, is outside of where we are today. Yep, so you're going to another place, to another kingdom, to another country. Yeah. That's right. And so there are all kinds of connotations. And how do we understand Christ as king? Yeah. Which is what we're going to be exploring a bit today. We'll just stop, so. Christ is king. Yeah, I mean, there's something about kingliness and leadership, isn't there? And uh, Jesus is a great example of the leader we follow. Yeah. 
today. I wonder how much uh, example we get of that leadership from kings, princes, prime ministers, leaders today, which is uh, 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 so different to what Jesus was standing up for. Do you watch The Crown on Netflix? I don't. No. I love it. It's just had a new series. And um, it's all fiction, I know. It's not really what it's like to be royal. But it's, it's fascinating about the protocol and the ritual and the uh, responsibility, the duty, the behaviour that comes with that role of being queen, in her case. And I think Jesus as king, you don't see any of that ritual role, um, deference. But what you see in Jesus is kingship is power because he's God Mm -hmm. but also um, that real coming alongside us the normal people you know usually you think of royalty being held at a distance don't you so you you have to stand there you wave your flag uh, you shake your hands you approach in a certain way whereas of course for me Jesus is about God coming really close to us and being with us and being alongside us and actually there's no sense of protocol Jesus is our friend, uh, he's with us, he touches, he heals, he moves, he eats, he's, he's very much with us, which is a very different imagery of king, I think. It is. I think that's part of what that wonderful passage is about, because the uh, authorities didn't know how to deal with Jesus, did they? No. And there he is on the cross, and they're deriding him, they're mocking him. Yep. Uh, and, and the kingliness, the leadership role of someone so special shines through in yep. all that Jesus does. And the fact that he'd been prepared to uh, allow himself to be put into that place, even though he knew what uh, his role was going to be. And uh, the two criminals either side obviously see something special in him by the language and the conversation that they, that they have. But Jesus remains Jesus. He remains that special leader. Even at his most vulnerable and when he's being defeated, effectively. Even when he's being defeated, yes. Because the Romans presumably see that once they've got him on a cross and he's about to die, uh, that's defeat. It is to them, but not, not, to, not to Jesus. Jesus has fulfilled all that, uh, that he came to do, which is what the, is the glorious thing about this last week. Christ the King going back over the four weeks. Yep. That end times have now almost arrived. Jesus has given himself. And Advent allows us to look back to what, for me, uh, what, what Christmas really means, that Christ comes into the world, into this new setting and new kingdom for us all. Mm. And there's something about living God's way now, living in the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, living out the values that we see in the Gospels, so living as good neighbours, as loving God, loving each other, serving each other, mm. Uh, giving each other compassion and hospitality, generosity, being forgiven by God. When we live that way now, in the 21st century, I think that's God's kingdom being glimpsed and recognised here on earth in this moment. Well, I've always believed that this heavenly kingdom that God promises to us it is now. And death that we pass into the next stage of that kingdom mm. is just, is just an, another step along, yeah. along the road. So we must never forget, I don't think, as Christians, that we're actually living a heavenly life now. And all that Jesus asks of us, that's why it's important that we follow his teachings and we, uh, we encourage others uh, to do so. Not just to wait for some reward yeah. when we die. No, it's now. Which is, what, God's which way is now. what the disciple, uh, the, the two men on the cross were asking for, isn't it? Yeah. A reward or a guarantee that it wouldn't be awful at the end. At the end. Yeah. Yeah. But we know that it's okay now. And, and, and will be in the future. Fantastic. Yeah. If I thought about it, we could have put a party hat on at this point. We could have a done. little crown. We could have done. But I didn't do that. No, Sorry. but you are thinking of crowns because, because crowns is going to be our major theme. It is. And this uh, season of Advent, thank you for the plug, that's really mm-hmm. good. This season of Advent, we're going to be focusing on that kingship of Jesus, yep. even as we start to prepare to hear the story of his arrival. We are. And we're going to be painting rocks again. So last year, we did an amazing project called Jesus Rocks, where we painted uh, baby Jesus on rocks and we hid them around. This year, we're doing the same thing, more rocks, because it was great. But this year, they're going to have crowns on to signify the kingship of Christ. And that will be picked up as well on our church Christmas card, which goes out to every house in the parish. Fantastic.
So we've got the whole idea of Christ the King coming as a, as a king, as a job. If you've enjoyed our videos, you can like us on YouTube, I guess. Uh, but you might want to find out what we're doing here in the team. You can look us up on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all at Beminster Team, or visit our website, beministerteamchurches.org. We'll see you next week. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.